Have you ever found yourself frustrated in a conversation because it didn't go as planned or as it was supposed to? Probably the most important thing for having an effective communication was missing. Bonjour, life sparklers, it's Claire. Welcome to the Integrally Alive podcast, practical wisdom and tools for unconventional humans to embody their unapologetic self and create a life of freedom and joy. And as usual, you can find show notes and resources on the website integrallyalive.com. And so the other day, I was uh, participating in a dancing session. Yeah, I know. How random of me, right? <laughs> you got me. So I was there and it began, and you know, as a lot, uh, a lot of times the facilitator was talking a lot in the beginning to get people moving, but we are there half an hour in. He's still talking a lot, but people are, are, are moving and quite, actually there's quite a lot of uh, movement in there. And then he stopped and he had us make a circle and began talking some more. And he began explaining his why for doing that. And I was honestly finding it a little bit weird because we were half an hour in, so we were already doing it. <laughs> so what's the point of explaining now what we are going to do when we already began half an hour ago? But anyway, that's what he, he was doing. But I could see that I wasn't the only one feeling disconnected to what was happening. I could see eyes rolling. I could see, you know, I could feel the atmosphere of the room changing. I could see people who still were moving a bit in the circle, going more and more like still, frankly still. <laughs> and it didn't change anything to his... Uh, talking or to his behavior. Okay, after a while, we started again. Um, and on the, on the whole session, he was giving cues. He was talking to what he was trying to make happen, honestly. And he was quite disconnected to what was happening in the room. And more and more, I mean, increasingly, it, it felt to me like he had an agenda. And he was going to make that happen, no matter what. Like we were here for him instead of him facilitating the experience for us. He wasn't, a, he wasn't listening to what was happening in the room. And when I say listen, it's a more of a, a mindset of being open and responding to what's happening, like reading the room and responding to, him, uh, to it being in a conversation, it was rather a monologue to us than a conversation with us. Does it make sense? I hope so. So again, it felt like we were, him, we, we were there for him instead of him facilitating for us or to us for having an experience. And now you're thinking, okay, Claire, you're nice and you're sweet moving like this, but I'm not a dance facilitator. Why are you saying that to me? Well, from my perspective, that applies to every conversation in every interaction you have. Are you talking to or are you talking with? Are you listening? That's what's happening here. That's what I'm talking about. And many times what happened, like in his case, is we have an agenda. We have an idea of what the conversation or what the interaction is going to be like. And maybe we have an idea of the outcome of the conversation. Uh, I would like that person to be a friend. I would like that person to become my romantic partner or a client or a work partner or whatever, or to sign whatever contract. So we have an idea of what we, we want to get out of this conversation. Well, could we set it out? <laughs> we, could we have the intention, so going into the conversation with an intention being, knowing the direction we want to go in, but without letting it become an agenda? Could we let the intention structure the, the interaction and the conversation instead of letting the agenda limit it. 
because really we never know what is going to come up from a conversation and let's take like i hear you you're a coach example totally random and you're you're having an enrollment conversation and you're talking to me yeah but i want that person to be a client if i never offer they will never become my client yeah it's true now let's say oh and <laughs> let's say what is the worst case scenario that can happen there and you might say well that person not becoming a client for me that is not the worst case scenario actually the worst case scenario for me in having a, a conversation with anyone is me not connecting with that person human to human that is my first intention foremost and first and foremost to any conversation i have but let's say worst case scenario is that person doesn't become my client right away after this conversation. Okay, well, in any case, he or she will respect you for not forcing anything on them. And maybe they will recommend you. Maybe they will become a client later. Maybe they will experience a shift and not need to be a client anymore. And that's a great gift you just give them and they will love you for that and become your truest fan. So you can never know what's gonna happen. And on top of having an intention instead of an agenda, can we have more than one intention for the interaction? For, so for example, my intentions would be, and actually I always have the intention, I just told it before, to connect to the person in front of me, human to human first, wherever it's a client or anyone. I have also the intention to leave any person I meet more alive than they were before. And for some, it's <laughs> there, they don't really need me for that, but for most people, they really need that. So this is one of my intention. I have the intention of empower them in regards to whatever they struggle with. And maybe I have another intention, which is eventually enrolling them as a client. But so even if I don't, uh, you know, tick all the boxes and have all my intentions um, fulfilled in that conversation, I'm still okay. Because overall, I will at least have one intention fulfilled and that's enough for me. If I connect it human to human with that person, that's enough for me. And one mindset I love to take on from that and that's really helped me is being a student of people. I just go into every interaction really curious and genuinely interested about them. What is their life like? What is it to be them? And it makes it so easy to listen to people and to be there for them. So does that resonate with you? Is it something you are already doing? Um, and if so, how does it make your interactions better? If not, how can you try it the next time you are talking to someone? What could be the intentions you add on your list? And what could be your trigger to remember, oh, being a student of people? Try it. Listen without agenda. Listen with your full presence. And then look at their face, brightening up. For some, it will be the first time someone truly listens to them. It's one of the most beautiful gifts you can give to another human being. And that's it. That was your weekly dose of fierce love, a mix of love and brutal honesty. Boom, your life just got easier. Don't thank me. Thank you for showing up to your unapologetic self. You love it? Great. You want more? Subscribe to so you get your weekly dose. And you want even more? Great. Hop on my socials, share your thoughts and comments. I love to read them and I reply with fierce love. Stay tuned for the next episode. Au revoir.